Hi, I'm Jason Hobbs. This is example 24 of how I organize a digital marketing strategy, version two this time of Raisin Cane, which is an on the farm market in Valdosta, Georgia. So what's the point? Analysis strategic planning, saving your resources by the pound is the goal, right? And the way that I organize a digital marketing strategy has evolved to these six steps, which we're gonna walk through. So remember, this is an unresearched one. However, in a typical situation, the first step is gonna be research. And the mission behind the research in my mind is to put together what's called a SWOT chart strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats for one specific brand or business. I'm using that each SWOT chart to inform decision-making. What are some of the first decisions to make is the goal of the strategy, the defining the clear customer point of view and what they're seeing and feeling and thinking and doing, just understanding their context or starting to understand their context. Understand it's a long-term relationship, right? And then from there, what's their pressing problem? Now, here are some of the questions and some reports that I'll run. It, it all depends. There's others that'll come into play, but it'll give you some idea, right? And then the goal for this strategy, again, unresearched, is the e-commerce experience coupled with building an actual audience for the Raisin Cane brand, which is part of Ken Corbett Farms, which also includes Kim's Kitchen Valdosta, right? And so the idea is to, rather than having the collective three brands treat themselves as advertisers where they're renting access to other people's audiences, whether it's the local newspaper's audience or a TV station's audience or any billboards on it, you know, it just regardless, they're renting access. However, once we treat them as a, their own media company, which is what this strategy calls for, then they begin to build their own audience. Specifically, I'd start with Raising Cane. And the customer point of view is parents, specifically parents of children, especially small children, within 60 miles of the farm, as well as online shopping parents. So the pressing problem is helping them do more good for their family with less. As the internet has become such a key part of our day-to-day -day life, my belief is that people like being able to avail themselves of local, right? And specifically, a farm is has that nostalgic effect these days. So by creating their own media, which they would treat it as a business asset because they're all these videos, their grandkids 30 years down the road will be able to watch them is the idea. So they're putting out their own show and that means that they're going to start creating their or organizing their own audience. And that audience plays out it, through email as well as people showing up obviously and all the above, really, just however that audience wants to interact with the brand. So the digital foundation, the hub of everything, is the home base, if you, for instance, with the farm, it's quite literally the land. I start with the website, the online store, and the media archive is the, are the three components of the, the digital foundation for me. And I, largely, I'll call it the digital office when you're talking to a local or family business owner. It just helps them kind of put it into context a little bit quicker. And the idea, though, is that it's, it's raising Kane's place online. So the build out from the homepage is the way that I approach websites. They were super complicated to me when I first started trying to figure out how to build them for myself and clients. And that was, golly, 2009, I guess. And initially though, super confusing and everything was hard and I knew I didn't, you know, it was just a, a quagmire of trouble. So, and I suffer from analysis paralysis on top of that. So ugh, it got ugly. However, what I learned on the other side is that I just start building from the home page and you can add a bajillion pages from there. doesn't matter all the different custom post types and different types of media. You can do all of the above and then some, but you have to have an initial starting place. And I consider the home page, especially when you're talking about local and family and you know local small businesses, then having that home page 
serve as the front door, if you will, for the business digitally is a great starting point. And I put a menu at the top and bottom. And because I use Essence Pro, the Genesis Child theme, it allows me to take care of that homepage using a handful of widget areas. And then I fill those out with what I want to be there. And then the navigation menus, make sure that those pages are populated and voila, you have a website. Well, here's an example. So that's using the Essence Pro theme. That's the home page. And then you can see that they can register. And if they do log in that same area on the home page, you just have to scroll down a little once you arrive there. As soon as you do log in, it includes all of their account information as well. So they can track orders, they can make orders, they can view what they've ordered over time and whatever. So the digital store, that's just giving people a friction-free access to buy. And the idea behind it would be they don't have the digital component as far as an online shopping cart yet. So that would be the first step is let people purchase online they already sell all this stuff through the physical brick and mortar location now we're adding into that right and as far as letting people access it digitally whether they come pick it up or have it shipped or however and items in the market as well as produce from the farm would be i would want people to be able to purchase as well as the food you know being able to order and make their and pay for everything through their phone etc especially if they're coming in for lunch or whatever to the uh, kim's kitchen at the on the farm market and then you have the weekly and monthly subscriptions i would definitely start looking into that but in the school trips you know just simplifying that for people to sign up or large groups or whatever and then yeah kim's kitchen's food i put question mark but that would definitely be something i'd offer and this is just a quick screenshot i didn't even change out the products from another example which was for a animal clinic so they're not selling you know animals at the market don't don't get your hopes up so the media archive is you want to archive it in your own warehouse that you own that's on your website and i include video audio and written slash images and here's a an example of the raising cane media page that i threw together and you know the idea would be that jessica would be she's the one pictured in the green shirt with her children and you know the idea would be that she in my mind unresearched she would be the person that i would have kind of be the face and be the one that was leading the raising king media moving forward because she'll be able to bring in lots of other people and however she wants to actually produce the media but it really the creative vision in my mind comes from her and once again unresearched right so the third step is the audience we said as you know when we defined the goal previously we said that the e-commerce experience as well as now they were going to stop being just an advertiser and they were going to start having their own audience so that they didn't have to rent access to everybody else's and the other benefit in my mind to this approach is when you do decide to rent access to other people's audiences you're actually assimilating them into your audience you know so you're just building your audience all the time it's not just you know, renting it and losing in touch with people, you're able to continue it is the idea. So the deep breath, be yourself. That's the first advice that I give people. And so when you're, and this is unresearched obviously, but typically if, if with Raising Cain, like off the top of my head, what I would recommend starting at is and without doing any research. So it could definitely change with research, but you document the story of Raising Cain that plays out over the years, starting with its origin. And the idea is she's documenting this for her kids, for her grandkids, for her, you know, all the future family to be able to go back and see, hey, when they first, I mean, not first, but it only had Raising King going for five or six years. And now it's been going for, you know, in the future, 60 years or whatever. Right. And so that's a big personal benefit. But the other benefit is it allows them to generate and, and keep attention from their own audience of potential customers. And the big thing that I always and I'm going to mention it again, but you have to commit to a weekly list of media deliverables in order to build your own audience. You have to show up consistently before the audience even shows up. So obviously you can't stop once they do start coming. Right. And then the other biggie is focus on your audience, focus on your that person, that quote unquote customer. You want to, in this instance, 
on research, I would look at empowering mothers to grow stronger families. Like that's the thing that jumps out at me with the media goal would be let's put videos that we can extract the audio and that we can you know have a written version for and each of these different episodes they're empowering to mothers in some specific way and that because it's you know she's a mother and associated with a farm and a family business you know what i mean it's just it's i think it's going to be very easy for her and for the team as a whole don't get me wrong not just jessica but I think that she would be the leader, the the executive producer, if you will, the showrunner, I guess is probably the best way to put it. I, I kind of just, to, and I know nothing completely unresearched. Uh, they were my client for a couple of years way back. Video, audio, and written versions so that they have, it's the person's choice, the mother, it's their choice, how they want to consume it, because it's probably going to change day in, you know, over the course of the day. So the consistent committed action each and every weekend and week out, again, you just, it has to be consistent. So that's the biggest thing that I've learned over the past 12 years. So media plan, all right, so unresearched again, the general audience that I'd start with, the point of view would be that of a mother, local mothers within 40 miles of the farm, as well as mothers that are gonna shop online for direct access to some kind of farm or on the farm market, that's gonna be intrigued by that, right? And I get to them second, I'd start with local mothers digitally and then start kind of testing really to find which of the external it works best as far as, but I'm still focusing on mothers. And my idea would be help mothers grow a stronger family with less. So show strategy. Each episode focuses on a how-to for one task a mother wants to accomplish. And it's going to be largely in my mind. And again, on research, what kind of makes sense to me off the top of my head is that with these mothers being able to keep their kids distracted for periods of time that's helpful to the kids you know that's going to be a good thing and then obviously bringing them out to the farm and helping moms feed their family and do so with you know, locally being able to do so with locally sourced produce that the farm has and so forth so the, the basic show strategy is just each episode focuses on the how-to for that mother, that local mother, and who wants to accomplish, you know, what does she want to accomplish day in and day out? It's all gonna be family related, right? I mean, she's a full-time, more than a full-time job. It's an overtime job as far as to run a family. And then you start adding in multiple kids, and oh, it just, same thing with the show strategy, just to be clear, I'd start with video for every episode, and then from that, I would create an audio and a written version. So the show format, just empowering videos is my mind. And again, unresearched, but help attention paying mothers grow stronger families. And that's just the, the general idea, how long they are, how short they are. That would all be something that would need to be tested over time and re would really come about from the repetition of actually putting the show out on a week in and week out basis so that that audience has a chance to start to grow and organize itself from around the media, around that brand. And then from there, it's just a conversation between the brand and the audience as the eye idea over a long-term view. So the customer intimacy marketing strategy is the way that I look at digital, right? I'm just, because in that instance, the simplest way to put it is, is that rather than trying to get a one night stand, you're trying to, from every customer, you're trying to marry every customer, right? So the show schedule, at least once a week, again, I do all three versions and media creation, the process. So it's all about attention. Now, I always focus on one person each time. So every time I make a video, I have an individual person in mind and the it's more the motivations from that individual person than it is, you know, their sex and age and skin color and so forth. It's more I'm worried about you know, the motivation as a human, as a person. And so I'm trying to talk to an individual person with a singular motivation attacking a specific problem. Now, the idea behind it is I'm not trying to be everything to everyone. I want to be everything to that one person, hopefully. And the, my other belief is that we as humans, that's what we do is we're able to see something that is for a completely different person. You know, I created it for this one person and 
other people are going to be able to see it and apply it to their context, take lessons from it to apply to their unique context as well, because that's just what we do. That's life, right? And part of attracting your ideal person is repelling the wrong person. So the other big thing to keep in mind is people improve through public experience and repetition. And you're going to say, oh, yeah, experience and repetition, totally. But it's the public that you can be very clear on. I have created over the past six years, I started dabbling. Maybe it might even been, it may have been more like 2010, 2011. I first started really dabbling with creating my own media, video, audio, written, right? And so over the course of time, the percentage of what I've created in written audio and video that is public maybe 5% total is public of what I've created. And you'll go, I mean, there's a lot of stuff on my, on my website, on my blog, as well as on my YouTube channel and on Facebook brand page and on LinkedIn and so forth. There's a decent amount, maybe 5%, probably closer to like 3% of what I've actually created. The key is you have to put it out and let the market decide. That's what I, the biggest lesson that I've learned probably make and share your video every single time put them all out don't don't hold any of them back just because understand that they're going to improve with repetition they're going to improve as you and your team and you know number one you're probably going to start by yourself right and then you'll start adding to your team so you're going to get better at it you know so it's just all repetition uh but it has to be public you're going to get much bigger benefit by making it public. It's going to happen faster by doing it that way. If 100% of what I created since 2010, when I graduated with honors, with my marketing degree from Valdosta State University down in Valdosta, that was May 8th of 2010. And, ever, and May 8th of 2010, I left there. I went and grabbed a bite to eat with my buddy that came up, Brian Green, and my mom and my aunt. They had all gone to the to the graduation at Valdosta State. And I drove back here to Fitzgerald, 416 West Cypress Street in Fitzgerald, Georgia. And I've been in my digital marketing lab literally every day since. Iterate your creation process. You gotta have a process that outputs something. So, and it sounds super simplistic, but this is literally what I started with. It, it's kind of grown from there, but it really boiled down to, I need to plan the video, what I want the video to be. I need to shoot the video so that I can edit the video, right? And that's gonna allow me to output the actual episode, the video itself. And when I publish, that's putting it on my website. And these are my definitions, right? And then distributing it, that's when I'm putting it to every other website. And promoting it is just putting more eyeballs on the media and some will be paid, some will be free. It just, there's so many different tactics, but the imperative is it has to complete, this process has to come to a full completion. It has to, by doing that, output something and deliver that creative composition. So the process that I use, and this is what I would recommend for um, Jessica Corbett, if she were going to start with this, and this is again on research that I'm doing this, but I totally believe Soapbox by Wistia, the pro version, it makes it super easy to present, so to speak, right? You have your slides, you go through your slides. I mean, like I'm doing. And I just, I think that that would be a really simple starting point. And then from there, she could bring in outside editors. She's definitely gonna want to. She can't literally do every component of it unless she wants to start out doing it that way. A one person media company, in my mind, is a strategy, but it's not forever. Every one person media company is going to grow into a two, three, four, five, ten 10 person media company, et cetera. That's the thinking in my mind, because once you have the capacity, people are going to want to tap into that. And so with me at Slide Deck, Soapbox by Wistia, I you know, use it to record just like I'm doing now. Because I have the pro version, I can download the MP4 file, import that into iMovie, do some light editing, and that allows me to output the media deliverables to you know for publication as well as distribution, right? And so the deliverables, and I approach this kind of like a buffalo, you know, with the American Indians with the buffalo, when they would take down a buffalo, they would use every single solitary part, 
right? I want to do the same thing every episode. I'm going to extract additional deliverables. So 60 second video clips for Instagram that are more vertical and then, you know, video clips for Twitter and those could be normal kind of horizontal focus. And then the audio version for anchor.fm, a written transcript, images, each with pull quotes from the episode, Twitter and Instagram posts. I, I really liked doing a series of images with a couple sentences with each of the images to tell a quick story. And here's an example of my slide, you know, just every time I do one, I, and this is a little bit old, obviously, but um, and then, oh, Soapbox by Wistia, this is my account, older screenshot, but just to give you an idea, you know, just each time I'm telling you I'm doing it, I am. The media distribution is, basic strategy for me is give the people what they want, where they want it, how they want it, every time they want it. So the customer is always right because we're looking at it from the customer or we're doing our best to look at it from the point of view of that customer in their shoes, so to speak. Again, unresearched, but... Oh, I didn't change that either. So it would be like raising cane, whatever.com blog, but the video, I put it into Wistia to put it on my website. I then upload it to my Facebook brand page, as well as the YouTube channel. She could do something similar. Uh, they could do something similar as far as raising cane audio. I recommend anchor.fm. I'm able to put my audio podcast there, which it automatically pushes out to 10 different podcasting platforms for me. And then the written in images is on the blog and it, the example there is vintage American ways, but you could, it would be whatever raising cane, raising cane.net or whatever forward slash blog. Just the idea is you put it on your blog on land that you own your domain name that you own that the brand owns. So prospects is the fourth step. And the idea is a digital offer and a customer attention cycle. And what I mean by that is, in order to have a prospect, there has to be an offer that they're a prospect for. There has to be something that's being sold, otherwise you don't have a prospect, right? And then the other part is you have to have, you have to account for the entirety of their life cycle. And I don't approach it on you know, their relationship life cycle or whatever. I look at it as their customer attention life cycle. So the life cycle of this customer paying attention to this brand. So they're going to be, they're not going to pay attention and then eventually they will to see if it's something they want something from. So local on the farm market, they start, they pay a little attention to see, ah, is this something I'd want to do? Or, you know, do they ship to me or, you know, do I live near it or whatever? And then from there, some will make a decision to continue and pay additional attention to maybe buy stuff and maybe they do and then they pay attention, maybe they need customer service or maybe they you know, pay attention to come back and buy more, whatever. But it's going to be that cycle, we're going to wanna to plan for that across the board. So the digital offer, I use solution access, value and education. I got this from Greg Ciotti when he was at Help Scout, the lead marketing person there. He may have moved on, I'm not sure, but it's as opposed to the four P's of marketing from back in industrial era, which just like, you know, that's what I mainly learned from Valdosta State when I got my marketing degree. So the four P's, solution access, value, education, I've learned in my digital lab and since then, and just kind of fine tuned. So starting with solution, it's the digital experience. It's just letting people be able to not just get information about Raisin Cane, but actually buy from, order from, engage with through that digital website. So the website slash the store that's attached to that website is literally just a digital representation or a digital reflection of the on the farm market, which is Raising Cane, the, the brick and mortar version. So the access would be the normal hours of operation brick and mortar wise, plus the website 24 seven, 365, right? And then the value is people feeding their family well and with less effort. So these mothers specifically is what I would focus on, you know, being able to introduce farm fresh products into their family and doing it cost effectively and 
cost effectively with cash, but also with effort. Because, you know, you don't meet many moms that are just like, I got tons of time, you know. So that's a very precious resource and, and tons of attention to pay. Like they have different children that they have to pay attention to. And they have maybe work that if they're working on the side in a lot of occasions or they're full time, you know, they're working full time or whatever. And then so there's just so many different things that they're paying attention to. So being able to pay less attention to you know, feeding the family it, that's a win for them. And the education, so the goal would just be empowering mothers. It, each episode would empower, and this is again, unresearched, but to help them feed their family and care for their family and do so with less effort and less stress is the goal. And then you know, the other part is just making sure people understand it's still the brand awareness thing, where raising, what Raising Cane is, where it is, right? And the customer attention life cycle, so Basic, and this is on research, but basic idea would be something where everybody starts as a stranger and then they identify themselves as a mother with a family and you know, so forth that they're feeding, they're responsible for feeding and that they need to you know, have some kind of an educational and interesting uh, <laughs> stuff going on with the kids on the weekends or, you know, when or during the summer or whatever. So the idea then is that some mothers are going to kind of qualify themselves by saying, yeah, I'm responsible for feeding my family and either I want you to ship me something, I'm interested in that, or I live close enough as far as to avail myself of the brick and mortar locations. And either way, now that person, that woman becomes a qualified prospect. And then from there, it's gonna they're gonna make her an offer and she either decides to become a customer or she doesn't, right? So again, I've kind of run through this already, but you know, they're curious about produce from local farms, but don't know Raising Cane, that's the strangers. So, and obviously Raising Cane doesn't know them either. And then the audience member, so they make media for the direct relationship with the people in their audience, right? And then you want to qualify the ones in the audience that, you know, qualify means also disqualify. So some are not going to, Maybe they are a mother, but they're in Singapore, you know, and they found them online. Or maybe they, you know, they're a mother and they live, you know, 90 miles away or, you know, whatever. So they just in 90 feels too far for them, you know. So and then obviously, so the whole point of this flow, this customer attention flow, a customer cycle is to understand that people the way that the strategy for the brand here is to be prepared to be attentive when people want to pay attention to them and i'm not saying 24 7 they're gonna have to man every you know but it's just being available for people and having a direct relationship with them that's the goal so and if you're doing that you're going to be able to navigate when those folks are looking for something you're going to be able you're going to be more likely to be able to give it to them what they want when they want it and so forth so again it's not about talking anybody into anything it's giving them an option to buy something that they want and some people will make the decision to become customers and i break them their experience down into two parts. I want to be very clear on how we're going to play out the customer conversation for them, as well as the customer feedback loop. And so the customer conversation, the idea behind it is it's a two-way conversation between equally respected parties. Like these are equals is the idea. So otherwise you're not going to, if they're not equally respected by each other, then you're just going to, they're going to talk at each other, right? <laughs> There's not going to be anything, any kind of conversation. It's just so relate to people is the goal of this conversation. Help them relax, help them you know, get a read on them and then be able to relate to them. And big part of that, probably the biggest part is you wanna be helpful. Like that's the communication that's outbound. It's not about sell, sell, sell. It's like, hey, we have acumen in whatever area and we're sharing that. And we're sharing it freely and generously is the idea. And then from there, you want to segment people just so that you understand more about them. That as they help you understand, as they help you, they give you information, they tell you about themselves, you want to remember that is the idea, right? And then from there, you want to qualify prospects. And the idea behind it is to make contextual offers. So the customer conversation, in my mind, unresearched for Raising Cane would be live chat and email along with you know, the phone and in person that they already do. So the 
customer conversation, I would organize it all in drift for each customer. I'd pipe in outside actions so that I could go in there or Jessica could go in there or any of our team for that matter and be able to look at and get an idea for each of the individual customers and be able to kind of dice that up a little bit. The customer feedback loop. So the idea behind it is it's a net promoter score question and I use gatherup.com to do it. And what happens is once there's a customer, say for Raising Cane, if they had it set up, then they would take the email of that customer after the completion of whatever they bought, they go over to GatherUp and put it in there, and then GatherUp would send an NPS question, which is, you know, on a scale of one to 10, how likely are you to share Raising Cane? And so the person that decides to click, they click on one to eight, it basically puts them into a customer service queue is how I see it. And then the nines and tens are thanked and then invited to share their thoughts publicly. And they're given shortcut buttons to go to profiles, Yelp, Facebook, whatever, in order to choose where they wanna speak publicly and just be able to do it a little easier. Okay, so the sixth step is campaigns. I have three categories of campaigns and I'm going to show you an example of one of each. However, typically they're going to involve multiple of each. It just depends on the unique context of the brand and where they are in their life cycle and so many other factors. So first example would be breaking the ice and that's a get attention campaign. And that's just to kind of introduce themselves to strangers. And I would start with the family team behind the farm as part of telling the origin story of Raising Cane. That's where I would, that's kind of unresearched, that's where I would begin. As far as the Keep Attention campaign, I'd start with the short story, and it's just to start to qualify people to use their service, right? So they offer it on the farm market, and they have obviously the farm with produce at certain times of the year, and they have Kim's Kitchen with food, and etc. So being able to help people qualify and disqualify themselves, that would be the very first step in the email list. And then beyond that, it would be to empower those subscribed mothers through helpful insights and tips. So every time you hit their inbox, I wouldn't have everything. I'd have one thing and you know, one story, one video, one whatever with one call to action, but make it to where whatever that one helpful insight or tip and or tip is, you know, it's helpful. And then you just keep doing that and that's gonna allow you to keep their attention. As far as an example, and again, on research of an admin type of campaign, I start with local citations and I begin by investing in Raising Cane's local citations and profiles online. And what the way that that works is you go to brightlocal.com, they have what they call a local citation builder service. And then for like two to five bucks per profile, it just depends. What you're able to do is upload all of your, well, your specific name, address, and phone number first and foremost, so that everywhere that that shows up online will all match exactly. You want the name, address, and phone number to be the same everywhere. And then you also can put a short description, a long description, images, a, a gallery of images, etc. And you put all of that into brightlocal.com and their team goes out to all the different places that you ask them to and they make sure that you have a profile and that it's correct and that you have control over the profile etc so it's very helpful for making sure that search engines specifically and social etc those they understand and they have the proper information for this brand's you know raising canes for their profiles or whatever all right so if you want to do it yourself it'd be about 750 then another 230 a month that's because i'm using liquidweb.com their beginner plan for managed woocommerce hosting 50 bucks a month for drift that's uh the two live chat operators and the email wistia for the video hosting and analytics as you're starting your own media company you want the ones you publish to your website you want total control over the player and you want better your analytics etc and that's why wistia and then gatherup.com for the customer feedback loop yoast you definitely want that for the premium seo plugin they may even have other stuff like the woocommerce add-on from yoast that you might want it, it just depends on your specific situation but you'll definitely want the premium seo the 90 bucks a year $300 a year or so for the Wistia.com soapbox. It's what, it's a Chrome extension. It's what I use to do every one of my videos these days is 
you know, I put together a slide deck and I turn on Soapbox and I go through the slide deck talking to the camera and recording myself. And then I can download that file, do some light editing, and then put out the different types of media deliverables that I need. And then $130 for the studiopress.com if you never bought anything from them for the Essence Pro theme. And if you have questions, feel free to email me or text me. Just give me some context in the text message. You can call too. I mean, I just, I'm not going to answer. So if I don't know your number, I won't answer. Feel free to leave a message though. And I definitely check those and I get back as soon as possible, uh, you know, when it's not a spammer or whatever. All right. So what's next is example 25. That's Monday, January 14th. It'll be of how I organize a digital marketing strategy. The 25th example, I have no clue what it's going to be, but, uh, you know, I'll see you then.